Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I cannot believe that I am sitting down and filming a first quarter kind of a wrap up. How did things go? What worked? What didn't work video already. So for my family, we did try to start a little bit earlier than the typical September school start. And we began the first week of August. And that brings us already to the first quarter. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of breeze through some of the stuff we've been using and talk about hit or miss. What has really been working for us and what has had to be tweaked a lot and what I'm considering throwing out completely. So let's get started. Okay. Um, since I just have a huge stack of books here in no particular order, I'm just going to kind of grab some stuff and <laughs> work my way off. So the Sassafras Science Adventures, we still absolutely love. I think I have the teacher guide down here at the bottom. Um, this one has required little to no change or tweaking because I had a, a fairly good idea of what I was capable of doing time-wise, what my kids would like and how I wanted it to go. Um, I've done a video on a more detailed look about how I'm teaching science if you're interested in that. Uh, but basically it is set up very similarly to Story of the World History with the activity guide where there's a lot to offer, almost like a buffet and you can pick and choose what you want. So we are still doing this. The bulk of what we are doing is reading this book, um, using any review questions or vocabulary words from here to make sure we are learning along with the kids in the story. We're touching on the geography a little bit. I wish we were doing it more and um, I think it's a layer I'm going to try to add in a little more depth as we go along, kind of a no pressure thing. And then we are still trying to keep up with sketching drawing and labeling the main plants that we are learning about. And then the last thing that we're doing a lot of it finally is I've put a lot of these books, the additional living books on hold. And so I get tons of these from the library and I actually have, I think every single one of these I just picked up the other day. And so throughout the week for fun, during quiet reading time, or whenever I really want to, I'll just bring those in and I'll have my big kids read them or I will read them out loud to my little kids. And honestly, one amazing thing that I need to rely on a little more is have my big kids read aloud to my little ones because then my older kids are getting that experience of reading out loud, which is, I think, a learned skill and you can practice and become better. And I think they need that experience. And then of course, my younger kids enjoying the story and that's a great way to bring them in to science in a fun way. So this is a huge hit. Love it. Um, I had kind of forgotten that this is either, so far it's been neutral um, as far as, is it a Christian base or a secular base curriculum? And I at least appreciate that it's neutral. I haven't come across anything that I don't prefer or I need to skip over and I don't have to explain away like, evolution or things like that as theories only um, because it's been neutral so far. So it is not Christian based. I've noticed that, but it is neutral and I really, really appreciate that. So this is a huge hit. We are going to continue through this as fast or as slow as it takes. We're really on pace to finish this the first half or within two quarters of the school year and pick up the next book and guide for the second half or the last two quarters of the school year. Another thing that is still a hit is Story of the World, treating it very much the same way I did last year. Um, I am trying to make more of an effort to do at least one activity slash craft from the guide for every chapter that we read. So um, I did take the time one day, and it actually took me much less time than I thought where I actually went chapter by chapter. Are we still in frame? Yes, we are, good, okay. Sorry about the little bit of a glare. Uh, there's some beautiful sunshine and where I have to set up my camera, I, I couldn't get it out of frame. 
So I went through and there's always all kinds of projects. Some say activity, some say craft, some are more involved, some are more like a game. And I would read through these and I tried to pick one that I felt like I wouldn't loathe, <laughs> that my kids would enjoy, that I had the craft supplies for already, that wasn't too messy, that I could pull together in five minutes. And I actually have a list in my personal planner back here. Let me think where I put it. And um, it's gonna be super hard to see, but I did, let's see, has this video gone up yet? Yes, uh, I did a video about how I plan, lesson plan every single week. It's not actually what you think. It's mostly putting books on hold and, and seeing which of these activities is coming up soon. Here, let me try to get closer. So here, um, we're coming up on an activity called string block printing and the next week we're going to make Japanese clear soup. And so it was something like that where I thought, you know what, I kind of have all those ingredients. Um, it's not going to take very long and my kids would probably taste it. And so it was kind of like, it's simple on my end, it's inexpensive and it will bring the chapter to life. So I'm really working on doing that and really excited and continue to love this. Uh, we still do, oh, that's just a page I tucked in there. I thought these were my maps. Um, I did go ahead and photocopy a bunch of the maps from the back and prepare those and we do go over those. Okay, so huge hit still is this. And just like last year, um, and just like I mentioned in my How I Teach History video that came up um, not that long ago, I also get books from the library based on the recommended reading lists in here. Sometimes they're picture books we read aloud and that's so much fun to really just bring illustrations um, and pictures, these vivid colors. And um, sometimes they're very detailed and give a, a great sense of the art and the culture because of the illustrations in these picture books. So it really brings some of these countries and time periods to life. And then some of them are chapter books and I will assign them to my older kids. Uh, and we're just kind of, we're going through this and um, yeah, we're, we're at a pretty good pace. We're a little bit behind, but that's kind of, if that's not the reality of homeschooling, I don't know what is. And of course there's no behind. Um, but when you kind of want to pace something through a whole year, yes, we're a little bit behind. But I, I've kind of thrown our end date out the window and really relaxed my thoughts and just had this mentality that when we're done with history, we'll be done with history. Uh, when my one child is done with math, we'll be done with math. And maybe this is a good time to talk about uh, my planning and my scheduling real quick because that's a huge part of something that was a miss. And that was a struggle already here in the first quarter and that I changed. I hope this video is not too all over the place um, and that it's a good picture of what's been going on for us. So I started the year using my Anna Vance homeschool planner. I, I do still recommend this if you're looking for a great homeschool planner. I love her products because not only are they quality, but they're very versatile and you can kind of build your own planner however you want. So I did want to say that um, even though I am going, I, I'm trying to incorporate a lot of this information in my smaller personal planner where I keep all my normal regular plans because that's just who I am and what I would like. Okay, so this is my map your year and I've done an extensive look in my Anna Vance planner at the beginning of the school year. I've done extensive videos. You can see them in my homeschool 2021 through 2022 playlist and see more about my planning. So I'm not gonna explain why I originally planned the way I did. I'm just going to assume you've seen that video and talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, how it has changed already in the first quarter. So first of all, within the first quarter, um, when we started school, we typically do four book work days at home a week. And then starting in September, we begin our homeschool group and get a fifth day in. Already, a lot of things kind of came out of the blue, um, family things, life things that caused us to skip a week of school here or miss a couple of days here. Nothing bad, just 
busyness that I didn't expect and it was nothing I could plan for and we just kind of had to roll with it and it was just a blessing that we're homeschooled and I didn't have to pull my kids out of school and they're not actually missing anything. We just pick up where we left off. So here we are and I'm already feeling the crunch of we're behind, we're behind, we're behind, we're behind. And I had a really good system set up, especially how I wanted to finish the year and have some projects my kids were gonna do, like maybe pick something from history and do a presentation on it or something from science and do kind of a science fair thing. And I'm already feeling like we won't have time to do that or if we do all of that, it's gonna push our school year way out. And I was like, I had that realization moment where I was like, I'm a homeschool mom. I plan and pick start times and end times. And I just, I had this realization, like I'm erasing from my mind when we're gonna finish. And as I was kind of saying a minute ago, whenever we finish history, we'll finish history. If we finish history here, then we're finished. If we don't finish it until here, then that's when we're gonna finish it. And we'll just keep plodding along and we'll do a little bit and there'll be a certain amount of year round schooling, but without a, an official schedule. We'll just, if history is the only thing we have left after this date, then we'll just spend a few days, a few weeks and we'll do a little bit. I won't worry about bringing in other new stuff necessarily. We're just gonna go till we're done. And I'm actually gonna do that with all of our subjects. So if I have one kid who finishes math here, then they're done with math for the year until I decide I'm ready to bring in new curriculum. And I'm even giving myself the freedom to say, if he finishes math here, I can start his new math here if I want, or I can wait you know, until the next September to begin his new math. And I just, I have that freedom and I can't describe to you the burden that is lifted off of my shoulders when I basically threw the schedule out the window. So I still, in a way, am aiming for this. Like I still consider this week nine, even though we maybe haven't officially gotten in those nine full weeks of school for the first semester. But we're at that time where it is approximately um, the end of the first quarter and we're gonna go into the next quarter and those kinds of milestones on our time really help me pace us and make the decisions about what's a hit, what's a miss, how can I help us, do we need a full break, do we keep going, and so that's really important. So that's been a huge change I've made, even though on the one hand, it's a small change and it's more a mental change for me. Okay, so let's go back into some of these curriculum and books that I have been using, hits and misses. So I wanted to introduce my kids to Shakespeare. I have these kinds of, I have two books like this where it's illustrated short stories like for kids, their picture books and all of that. And then I have one, um, it's like the poetry series, poetry for young people series, I think. And it includes a lot more of his sonnets and poetry and a few excerpts from his original works. And I just wanted to start here. I wanted it to be a fun thing. And can I tell you, my kids absolutely love these stories every time. So my goal was to start reading one and to read a few pages. So I think we've gone through the first couple of stories. So let me get to a chapter here. So my, my thought was they wouldn't be that interested. We do this in our morning time. I, they have little chapters like this. So I would read, you know, one chapter, which is however many pages. And then I would stop and my kids begged me to keep going. So I've been reading almost one story at a time when we do read it, which is a much bigger chunk. And we've been doing this about once a week. Um, and we've done it at least three or four of the weeks, I would say. So we've made it through, I think, two and a half stories with that pace. Sometimes I just have to say, you know what, guys, we really need to work on some of our other things. Maybe we can read more later and it's just how our day is going. But overall, this is a huge hit and I'm really glad that we're reading it and that we're enjoying it 
I do want to make it more regular, but let's be real. This is one of the things, like if it doesn't happen, it's really not that crucial to what I feel are the important things in my kids' schooling. But I do love this. I do love this with the kids and hope to do more of this. Okay, what do I want to do next? Let's do laying down the rails. So this is habit training. It was really important to me this year, as I've talked about, to incorporate more Bible, um, and not even more Bible, like it's not a quantity thing, it is a quality thing, and to bring in character and to study habits, um, to study cleanliness, to study honesty, modesty, manners, all of this kind of stuff. But I, and I've heard people love this book and hype it up, and I finally purchased it. I got, um, I think this is the one then for, like, for the mother. Somehow there's a book that, like, the mom reads. It's almost like a teacher manual. And then there's two, like, student books. And I'll be honest, I have, I cannot figure out how they're arranged. I don't like the stories. I, I basically am like, why do people like this? I don't understand. I cannot make my brain wrap around why you have this one, why you have the other book, what you read, how you train your kids in these things. I feel like I don't know what I'm teaching them. I don't know how to teach them. And... I have basically stopped doing this. Maybe what I need to do is just take some more time on my own to read through this, to read the books together and to get a better feel for how this works. I'm sure it's a great curriculum. I just don't know how to use it. That's the reality. And I kind of feel like I don't have time. And my husband and I are pretty um, devoted to teaching our kids manners and to modeling kindness and things like that. And so they are getting it from us. It's not like it, we're devoid of it. And so this is a this is a huge miss for me. And I don't know if I will pick it up. I don't know if I have time. I feel like I'm behind in everything in life and um, homeschool lately with busyness and just other responsibilities. And so I'm like, I'm kind of like, you know what? I haven't even touched this after the first probably two or three weeks. So I'm sorry, I really wanna like it. And again, maybe it's just a season I'm in and I don't understand the book, but I, I can't figure it out. Oops, I didn't realize that this was squished in between there. This is just one of the reference books that we use for our science and I love it. I love I love all, all things related to our science. Okay. Um, so a lot of this is language arts, and so I'll do language arts as a group, and let me get into a few more of our morning basket things. So I did start to do some of this simple Spanish with my kids, um, and I do love it. I think the format is amazing. It's user-friendly. I like to take these kinds of things, and I'll actually put them on the refrigerator with magnets, but... I forget to do this. Um, part of it is a habit. I haven't developed the habit of using this. Um, the only way it really fits in our schedule is about once a week. And then it's really difficult to remember to review things throughout the week. And it just, it's honestly not a priority. And I know this sounds bad, but it's like, I'm in an English speaking country and I have no need for any other language at this time. And it really just feels like an extra thing that I don't need. So while the actual curriculum in itself, I really like, and I'm going to hold on to it. I, I believe it's a huge hit and I think my kids enjoy it right now. I think I'm setting this aside again. I am so busy and overwhelmed and I feel like I'm just barely scraping by with the necessities of life and meals and basic house cleaning and basic math and reading in our school that I just don't have the time or desire for this. And I'm, while I love this curriculum, it takes up more of my time and I just don't seem to have the desire to spend, to, to split the time that I have for my kids in school to try to do some of this. So going forward, I might try to find a way for my older two kids to kind of do this on their own 
because they would absolutely love to use my phone or a tablet with the QR reader and to scan the things and to listen to the things and to kind of read along. So if I can figure out a way to have them kind of do it on their own, I will bring them this back in this current school year. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to drop it for the whole school year, which makes me want to cry just a little bit because I do love it as a curriculum. Okay. I am sorry this video is so long, but I am getting towards the end. So far, we have loved this as a picture study. Actually, it's not like a picture artist study. It's in general an art. Um, all of the art is by different artists. In fact, I, as far as I know, there's no duplicates. I don't think there is a repeat. Maybe there is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a couple of repeats. And this again is something that I've really enjoyed with the kids. Um, it really is as easy as getting the next picture. I just, I'm doing them in order for no reason other than it's in order. And there's no like, there's no flow as far as the first picture is, you know, from ancient history all the way up to modern history. There's no order like that. It's just a, a nice assortment of artists and some of their work. I read this out loud. I go through the questions and say, you know, now let's look at the picture together. Do you see the houses in the picture? Are they side by side or one in front of the other? How can you tell? And we go through this and then I put this on the refrigerator. So we look at it for, at this rate, we're doing probably one picture every two or three weeks because again, I just feel like my time is already stretched thin and to devote even five minutes a week to doing this has been a struggle. So we just keep it up there. I don't worry about whether my kids remember who the artist is or the name of the painting, but at least we're walking by a beautiful piece of artwork and hopefully someday when we go through art again or they touch on it in other studies or interests and hobbies, they will recognize some of the works we've gone over. Even if they don't remember any details about it, they'll just be familiar with beautiful works of art. Okay, oh, this curriculum is, an, is a hit. I do love how it's laid out. I'm realizing it's very wordy um, as it describes the different composers and talks about their life. Um, it's too much for my group of kids when I try to do from my 12 year old all the way down, or excuse me, my 11 year old all the way down to my three year old, wow. I almost got all the ages of my kids wrong. So this is too much for my three little ones. And I just don't feel, here's my struggle with art, music, and all of those things. I think they're absolutely lovely, wonderful things, but I really don't find them essential to an education. I just really don't. I feel like there's so many things in our current culture that are beautiful. Um, music that is beautiful, nature that is beautiful. Um, I don't worry that my kids are exposed to huge amounts of historical art and music. Not that they're bad things, but I just don't feel that it's as important as my kids having uninterrupted playtime to pursue their hobbies. Um, I don't feel it's as important as our family conversations and our family dinners, and of course not as important as reading and writing. So even though I like to do these, I've seriously been editing and usually only reading one or two paragraphs. And then we do listen to one of the songs, but I don't love classical music apart from certain songs. And so far we have not really listened to any composers that we really enjoy any of their music. And so, um, where are we? We're like seven lessons in. Um, so I just don't find any enjoyment from playing it in the background during lunch or, you know, during chores. We have our, our family favorite songs and our, our own family culture of different kinds of music and songs that have meaning for us as a family because they're from a movie we enjoy or because my husband pulled one of our girls aside and slow dance to a, you know a fun country song or something like that. And so when we play music in our home, oftentimes it's those kinds of things and this has no connection for us. So 
I'm probably going to set this aside or do it whenever I feel like it, but it's not really something that I work to continue doing regularly. Uh, even though we've made it through several composers, apart from those 10 minutes on the day that we talk about it, I'm not doing anything else with it. So I don't know, we'll see. Art and music just seem like they're great and they seem like a great idea, but I don't even get that excited about them. So how do I expect my kids to get excited about them? And then I'm also just like, why? Why do I wanna take the time to away from other things in order to talk about these? I'm not sure. So there we are. I've probably, <laughs> I've probably um, talked more about that than I needed to. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's where my head is right now. My head is let's focus on the really crucial, crucial things and let everyone else's interests take them where they want to go. And art and music just are not huge interests for me or my kids, at least not studying art. We love to draw. We love to do things like that. Okay, lastly, I think is all related to language art. So one of the biggest changes that I have made is for, let's see, I think these are both for my um, first slash second grader. She's my child who's kind of straddling the end of her first grade year and getting close to beginning her second grade year. Just where her book work and education falls in the calendar is, is different. So she's kind of finishing up one year rather than beginning a new one. And we did, uh, we started the year with this spell well. I thought this would be great. Um, these are all words that are very simple for her to read. So it's below her reading level, but I wanted her to learn how to spell them. So she could just kind of have, you know, a leg up and begin spelling. And then the same thing, we've struggled so much with my older two kids with grammar I was like I really want her to start learning these little things right from the beginning even though they're so so simple and it's not a lot of work and we did great for a few lessons but here's what I realized this is too much she needs her math and she needs her reading practice and we have continued doing explode the code for her so her book I think she's in book number three because it reinforces her reading. And right now, those are the only things we do. She does her math, she reads out loud to me and we practice reading, and then we do explode the code, which reinforces that. And this is just, this is like busy work. And it doesn't, it takes away from that crucial skill of gaining confidence in reading when all the rest of her education is going to hinge on how well she reads. And I was like, why am I trying to do these kinds of things? when I would rather spend an extra 10 minutes reading with her. So I have thrown these out and I will save them because she's going to need these someday. And these are kind of the first books for those things. Uh, it's possible that come January, February or March, she's really taking off in her reading and the time is right for this. Or it may not be until a year from now at this time in the next kind of in the next school year. Um, so I think these are very valuable. I think these are a great curriculum. I do highly recommend getting these ones and I know I'm probably going to use these. I just don't want to overload her right now. And I, I had that moment where uh, what I think we can do and fit in our schedule and the reality of what we all have time for and brain capacity for are two different things. And so I had to cut something that was nice, but not necessary. I did that same thing with my kindergartner we started explode the code i think um the reason i'm not doing explode the code with him right now is because it is not coinciding enough with our reading phonics we are doing how to teach your child to read and 100 easy lessons and already in this book it's trying to introduce you to sounds but your activity is to read these words so I, I, I have been struggling with this so much for two of my kids. I feel like there's a lot of curriculum that you go from preschool and all it does is the ABCs, A through Z, here's the letter, trace it, and maybe a little bit with the sound. And then all of a sudden in a kindergarten curriculum, what is supposed to be next, it's like, read this word. And I'm like, where is the bridge? 
where are the curriculums that bridge that? You, I, and I, uh, yeah, okay, that's a rabbit trail. I'm so frustrated with things like that. So this is more advanced than him learning to read. So thankfully he can read words like this, but like to go through all of this writing, this is just way too much for him. And I was like, no, I want you to learn to read and I don't want you to hate reading and writing. So we've completely ditched this and possibly for the entire school year, he will just continue doing his horizons math with me and he will continue doing how to teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons and he is just loving it. He's ready, uh, his brain is ready, he has a desire to do it and that's all we need to focus on. Um, so when I thought this would be more of a companion to teaching to read a lot more about phonics. So this is like phonics mastery when I need like learn phonics. So that was kind of an error on my part, thinking that this would go along and kind of guide us in our phonics journey. And it's not really intended to do that. All right. Math, as I've mentioned a few times and you don't see here at all, is 100% working. All of the math for all five of my kids, we math is easy for us and in that sense of what we're using, the pace it's going, how I teach, how I interact with my kids and what they do. So math is great. So this is what I started the year doing with my 11 year old and nine year old. Last year we had done level two. Um, I don't own level three. I thought we could skip to level four. And this curriculum, I don't know whether to call it a hit or a miss because I understand the philosophy behind learning to write by studying all of these writings, like pieces of literature, pieces of speeches and fiction and nonfiction. Um, I understand like some of them will talk about, um, oh, I can't even like semicolons. So this is when you like teach your kid about semicolons but I'll be honest, I like the idea of dictation. It sounds really good, but when we actually put it into practice, I find it ridiculous where somehow I'm supposed to be able to repeat this only three times and my kids can remember sections of it and write it down. I'm like, there is so much spelling. There is so much, like, how do you teach them to use semicolons if you don't see it? Like my kids need to see things and we need to talk about the rules and then we need to see examples of it. So this was becoming really weird to me where instead of ever getting practice writing and putting like coming up with an idea for a central narrative thread and then having original sentences, I'm like, how, do, how does this teach? My kids aren't making the connection from what we're reading and how it's well written to how to recreate that and write something for themselves. So I'm like, this is, this is a waste of time for us because it is not in any way teaching my kids how to take the good literature and the good writing that we are seeing and reading and replicate that in any way. So I'm ditching this completely. And I happened to find this at a free book, not sale, cause it was free. And this is what I want. So I don't know if this is just the learning style my kids and I have, but we need like step by step. We need the points. We need to go through these kinds of things. So I'm using this. We just got it a couple weeks ago. I've been trying to read through it so I can understand it and then therefore like walk my kids through it. Already I could see progress just going through this where we talk about how you start with a main idea and you come off it with some supporting ideas and then underneath those, there are details that you're gonna talk about. And then I'm excited because then what you do is you can turn it into how you organize it and then you can create sentences. And here's actually how you take something and turn it into writing. So this is very basic. I don't even know much about it, but are we in frame? Okay, good. But this is what I am going to be using for now. And then I'm not sure where to go from here. I don't know how much it will improve my kids' writing or not. Um, I feel we're right at the beginning of teaching how to write papers and things like that. So we'll just, we'll just go from here. 
and we'll see how long it takes us. And maybe honestly, we'll just continue repeating the cycle with different lengths of papers, different kinds of papers. Maybe it's a book report. Maybe it's a, you know, can you write a summary of this, but organize it well, you know, can you do something like that? So this has replaced this. And I admit um, I'm struggling to, to do this. I would like to be doing little pieces and chunks of this every single day with my two older kids, but um, I admit it's been really hard for me to find the time because often I'm working with my three little ones while my two older ones are working on some independent subjects. And then before I know it, it's lunch and then I've got chores and then I film videos and then it's like I have to try to regroup the three of us so we can sit down and do this. So I, I need to work this into my schedule a little bit better, but this is much more helpful to me and hopefully to my kids and actually going from, I don't know, to actually write anything. I feel like we actually need to write something. So those are the biggest hits and misses and changes and things that I am dealing with in my homeschool this year. It is definitely been what I, as far as I remember, one of the roughest starts to school that I have ever had. Usually at this time, we're like doing everything and I'm following the schedule and we're enjoying it. And it's about this time that the newness wears off and I start dropping things. But I've just been frustrated from the get go that we're doing too much in certain areas and just really trying to find something that I can hang on to and I can kind of enjoy and my kids can kind of enjoy something where we're not doing school, what feels like all day and really just get the things done we need to so we can pursue our interests and hobbies and enjoy our life. So let me know, has this school year, has it started well for you? Has it been a struggle like it has been for me? How many things have you already ditched or changed? I would love to hear that I am not alone. If you want to take the mo a moment to comment down below. And if your school year is going well, I am so happy for you because I know that feeling and it feels amazing. So keep up the good work, mamas. Enjoy your school year as much as you can if you're struggling. And of course, love your year if you're having a great time so far. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.